evening, and thank you for joining us at HCAM's at HCAM for HOP, EHOP's fourth annual Know Your Vote pre-town meeting question and answer forum. My name is Amy Ritterbush, and I'm president of EHOP. EHOP was founded in 2007 under the name Educate Hopkinton, and is an organization whose purpose is to gather and share information concerning town and school budgets with the citizens of Hopkinton. We want to inform people of anything that may affect their tax dollars, including zoning and land use issues, which may not have an immediate budget impact, but may have an impact over our town, on our town fi finances over the long term. We are a group of individuals who realize that we can have an impact on the future of this town. We recently changed our name from Educate Hopkinton to EHOP to reduce the common misconception that we only cover school budget issues. Recognizing that it is impossible for every citizen to become fully informed on every issue, we made it our mission to provide accurate, timely, and relevant information that is easily accessible using social media. We host a website that is a, it is a virtual town caps, time capsule of Hopkinton Town meetings past and present. We publish a bi-monthly e-newsletter distributed to our over 700 subscribers, and we use Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more frequent day-to-day -day posts. Our goal tonight is to give residents a chance to have their questions answered about the Warren articles prior to town meeting. It should also give town officials a chance to hear what decisions residents are struggling with in advance so they can share how they came to vote on each article. Knowing the how and why of, are critical in making good informed decisions. Our hope is that people use our venue to figure out how they will be voting and better prepare them for the meeting and ultimately reduce its length. It is hard for the average voter to, to spend three to four evenings in a row at the middle school auditorium while balancing work and home responsibilities. Important voter information. Annual town meeting begins next week, Monday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. in the middle school auditorium. There are 52 questions on the warrant this year. Town meeting typically adjourns at 11 p.m. and continues on consecutive evenings from 7 to 11 until all articles are voted. In recent years, town meeting has lasted two to four nights. You must attend in person to vote, and a quorum of 100 people is needed to open the meeting each night. Annual town election is Monday, May 16th from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. in the middle school Brown Gym. You may vote any time during polling hours, but the town clerk would like to remind voters that the entrance for town elections is different because it occurs while school is in session. The rear entrance of the gym is used for all elections. To promote student safety, the entrance to the polls is in the back. During the last election, she noted that voters were not utilizing the lower back parking lot, and she has purchased a flag or ba banner to highlight the entrance, and we wish to encourage everyone to park in the back, lower back parking lot. To access the back parking lot, use the driveway near the water tower and continue past the upper lot to behind the gym. For the safety of the students, there are no public restrooms during town election. Before I introduce our panelists and ask Dr. Carlin to ask some frequently asked answer some frequently asked questions about town meeting, I just wanted to let you know that we have volunteers standing by now to receive your questions or comments by phone, email, or social media. Use the hashtag eHop on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. You have the option to ask your question live on the air or have one of our board members type it in for me to read. We always like to hear from new voices, so if you're comfortable asking your question over the air, please do so. Our panelists tonight are Dr. Bruce Carlin, our town moderator, Ben Palico, the chair of the Board of Selectmen, Norman Kamalo, the town manager, Dr. Kathy McLeod, superintendent of schools, Ellen Scordino, chair of the school committee, and joining us shortly will be Ken Wisemantle, the chair of the planning board, but he has a planning board meeting tonight, so his time is limited. And we will give priority to his questions, uh, questions regarding planning and zoning when he's here. As we mentioned, there are 52 articles on this year's warrant, and at this time I would just like to call out some of the articles that have drawn the most attention as we ported, posted them to social media this week. They are the overall town budget, which is a 3% increase from last year. Also, several pay-as-you-go capital articles, including IT equipment replacement for 100,000, system-wide school security upgrades for 100,000, the Hopkins School Boiler replacement, the middle school water heater replacement, the high school athletic center scoreboard replacement, and a system-wide school technology upgrade for 100,000. Some of the other town capital expenses are lake con <coughs> lake, uh, weed control at Lake Maspinock for 60,000, the sidewalk master plan phase two, and the purchase of a dump truck for 200,000. There are also several water enterprise fund articles this year, a Grove Street water tank replacement for a million and a half dollars, and a water main replacement on Hayden Rose Street, and a um, water source of supply for a million dollars. And these all come from the DPW Water Enterprise Fund. Some of the other school capital expenses are middle school auditorium upgrades, a school bus parking lot, and an artificial turf field with lights, the design and feasibility. There are also several community preservation fund articles, um, including funds to build a public trail and dog park at 192 Hayden Row, 
historic preservation funds to restore the McFarland Sanger House, and funds to reinstall fencing around the Claveland Fountain that's recently been restored on the town common. There are also some big zoning bylaw amendments, including um, amending the hotel overlay district and creating an Elmwood Park business district. And finally, near the end of the warrant is the, an article to change the position of town clerk from elected to appointed. All right, we are now ready to take your questions by phone, email, or social media. And we have a few questions that were submitted to us in advance that we can start off with. To join in the conversation, please use the information at the bottom of your screen. So I think um, one of the first questions I think we'll ask is about um, the fountain on the common. We got a lot of comments on social media about um, why is the fencing going in there? Why not benches or f flowers, flower beds around the fountain? There's never been a fence there before. People, so can, you, can we have an explanation for why we're adding fencing? Or? Right, so this is a CPC article, but I can talk to it. Um, when the fountain was re fixed, repaired last year, um, a couple things were done. First of all, there was a, a quite large um, pump mechanism, pump and piping mechanism insert put in the ground. It, it's probably four feet deep and kind of four feet square at the top. And then also all around the fountain, as everyone has seen and I think liked, um, there's a lot of landscaping, a uh, number of flowers. The fencing is, is, is just a small fence. It's a few feet tall, designed to both protect the flowers that you mentioned, the landscaping that's around the fountain, and also to keep you know, little kids, other people like that, from, from accessing this, um, this uh, sort of underground space that, that has piping and all, and it would it'd be undesirable to get people into. So it's, it's really more of a decorative fence. Um, it isn't going to replace the landscaping. In fact, it's going to protect the landscaping. And again, it's for some level of, of reasonable safety for uh, children primarily um, uh, around, the, around the structure. So it's not like a stockade fence. This is a relatively small, few feet high decorative type arrangement. Um, another question we received was, um, what are the middle school auditorium upgrades? Can you specify what, what's wrong and what's going to happen with the middle school? Certainly. Um, the main improvement is air conditioning. Um, this has been something that's been a problem. We use it widely. The town uses it for different events. Um, it's surprisingly warm even as early as April um, and into October. So the biggest uh, improvement will be air conditioning. There's also rigging to do with the curtains that need to be updated on the stage. Um, and some final painting that didn't get completed with the first phase. Okay. Let's see. And how about, um, can we, should we wait for Mr. Wisemantle or can we answer the question, ask the question about the dog park? So the, the question- Tim's um, gonna sneak out of this without having to answer <laughs> anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how will the dog park work? Will there be parking? Uh, will residents need a permit? How will it be maintained? I can't speak to the dog park. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the, the trail part, though, the, uh, the reason, one of the main reasons for purchasing that property, though, was that it actually contains a portion of the former railroad bed that we um, seek to use as part of the extension of the, of the Hopkinton Trail Network down eventually to Milford and obviously back up to the rest of the town. So. Um, so you, you t the part that's going to improve the public trail is, is, is again, designed to, to support that rail bed being um, enhanced for use. But that's the only part I can actually talk knowledgeably about. Okay. Um, so for Dr. Carlin, um, are there any basic town meeting etiquette uh, and procedures that are important for people to know, especially if they've never been to a town meeting before? Uh, well, first off, Amy, thank you <laughs> and thank EHOP. Uh, for this event. This is really uh, nice. It's nice to get it out a week before uh, things happen. Uh, generally, in town meeting, we try to make it as comfortable and easy as to do. But the, the biggest thing is just wait your turn at the mic and uh, try to keep your um, discussion as short as possible. I constantly point out that uh, the pithiest arguments win the most voters. The longer you go, the more people you lose. And, um, and just be respectful of others. Don't make uh, any uh, ad hominem attacks while you're up there. Say, well, I disagree with Mr. So-and-so because of this. Speak to the issues instead. And uh, I would say that uh, in 
my 20 years uh, as moderator, I am uh, impressed with the high level of engagement of the town and the, uh, the basic uh, etiquette that is commonly uh, uh, given to uh, or performed by, by our town meeting. I think our town meeting is uh, basically congenial most of the time and that's what we want. We want you to be able to have a, a nice area to, uh, uh, to air your ideas and then vote and, and then we move on. But uh, I'm impressed that we have a <coughs> uh, very engaged um, public. We have an incredible uh, history of volunteerism in this town. And uh, I mean, just basic things people know and they uh, behave very well at town meeting. Okay, so now we have a school question about the, the new turf field. People um, I think are surprised by this one and they just want to know more details. Um, is it an artificial football or baseball field? Um, why not replace the current football field instead? Have we looked at flooding? Um, what are the materials considered, including non-toxic options? Do you want me to take those one at a time or give a general? You're going to get a general update. overview of the project. Sure. I think people don't know much about it yet. Sure. So um, I have a, a, just an update here. Um, there's been a committee formed at the, at the high school that's been working with Kathy Hervel of Gale Associates on the feasibility study uh, portion of this, this um, proposal, which has been funded through the athletic revolving account. And basically, we just wanted to get out there and gather information um, before coming to town meeting so that we could begin to have a conversation about something that I've heard about since I got here, that people really want us to look into and study the possibilities um, of a turf field. One thing that I think will be of a surprise, and we are going to be meeting, uh, prepare, uh, providing a full report for school committee on Thursday night of this week, um, is the location. The, the proposed location is fields four and five, which actually is behind the current what we refer to as the football field, uh, the field that has the, the lights. Um, the reasoning behind that is that w what I've come to understand and didn't realize before um, is that if we use these fields, four and five, we will be able to play the following sports on this multi-use field uh, to include football, soccer, field hockey, baseball, softball, and lacrosse. Um, the constraints of the current field as designed, sorry, the, the what we refer to as the football field as designed is that it wouldn't, because of the way the track is constructed around that area, we would not be able to um, play some of those sports. So the proposal that we will be hearing about um, and that we're seeking funding on for the design portion of this work would be uh, to be on fields four and five. It includes lighting, uh, of course, for that area. We've been working with other recreation uh, groups in town to talk about how this could be a shared use facility. Um, and you asked about flooding. I'm sorry, what was that question? Um, the person said, let's see. Oh, sorry, I moved to another Oh, one other, there. I'm sorry, one other point I wanted to make is that the we feel it's a great advantage because there will be both turf and grass fields avail available then for all high school sports. Um, and that seems to be something that is a, a great advantage because uh, of the use of the fields. We could practice on certain fields and, and, and use the turf for other, for, for performances or for competitions, I should say. So the question just says, have we looked at flooding? So I'm yeah. assuming they mean that there could be runoff from the turf field right. and flood onto and other parts of That's all parts part of, of design. So yes, um, because I think the area has, is typically wet is probably where that question is coming from. We have been prevented from being able to get out early enough in the season to use our fields because they are so wet. So mm -hmm. perhaps the question comes from there. Yeah. Um, but it is all um, part of the extensive design um, piece of, of this project. Okay, and just, I think we had understood that the 100000 is for the feasibility and design part, and then at a future year, an article would come forward for the yes, rest of the project? Yes, and part of this um, design, the, the, the design and feasibility, is looking at um, the actual cost um, so that we would have we a really a, a solid number. Um, I did want to say that, <coughs> because I did hear this, the health issues associated with crumb rubber fill mm -hmm. um, is something that will also be looked at. Um, there's an uh, alternate infill that would increase the cost um, to the project, but we're looking at all of those different variables um, okay. with this project. Okay. 
And have any alternative fundraising sources been considered for the feasibility study, such as um, corporate or parent donations or the booster club? So feasibility was funded through at the athletic revolving account. As okay. far as um, other sources for this particular portion of it, no. All right, we had a, um, a Twitter question. Why is a small decorative fence around the fountain, why would it cost $10,000? Uh, so this is a CPC discussion topic. I, I simply know what it's about. I can't uh, speak to the cost specifically. Okay. So if we find that information, we can put it on our website later. Okay. Oh, uh, how about the Lake Maspinac weed control? Um, could Mr. Kamala talk about that? Um, they're, they asked yes. for a sum of money last year, and then they're going to ask for another sum <coughs> this year. So I guess people are wanting to know the progress, like um, what's been done and what's planning to be done next. Yes. Um, in fact, uh, through the generosity of uh, the town, we have had a consultant working alongside uh, a town-appointed committee uh, looking at the different options for addressing weed control and management. Uh, at this point, my understanding is that re the request for additional funding, which was initially uh, put forth in the draft warrant, will not be moving forward at this annual town meeting. Okay. So however, okay. however, as we have had in prior years, we do have money in the, we do have a request in the DPW budget uh, for general uh, weed control and maintenance uh, at the lake. Okay. But Article 14 will probably be withdrawn, yeah. or no action. Okay. All right, another water question. Um, the new water tanks at Grove Street, um, people are wanting to know, um, uh, like, how old are they? Have there been any problems? Why do we need to replace them now? Um. <coughs> right, so the existing water tanks are 40 years? 40 years old. At least 40 years old. Um, they are um, uh, in need of dramatic repair maintenance. Um, uh, that would be uh, actually almost approximate the cost of, of the replacement. Um, uh, they, in general, don't really serve the needs of the community anymore. So the idea here is that instead of, of spending, again, I think it was very close to expense, I don't remember the, the number for the repairs, but it was, we looked at the, we looked yeah. at a repair as an alternative. It was virtually the same amount. Um, it, it was much more determined to be much more cost effective and also just better suited the long-term needs of the town to replace the two water tanks with a single water tank. Um, so what we'll end up with is a, is a different configuration up there um, uh, that in general should work much better. Okay, and so these are from the Water Enterprise Fund, so does this mean rate payer, payers will be funding these essentially not not the right. whole town? Yeah, this all, yeah it's, it's all bonded <coughs> and, um, through the Water Enterprise. And another question, I guess they're wondering how serious the problem is with the water tanks. What are the implications if this is voted down this year? Uh, uh, at some point, the water tanks are going to become unsafe to use, and we'll just have to stop having water. Um, this, is, this is not an um, insignificant concern. Okay. And I think I saw a Facebook question came in. Oh, no, that was it. That was the Facebook question. Okay. Okay, so CPC funds are being requested for six acres of land on Main Street, uh, East Main Street, um, near Presswick Drive. Can you explain um, what this is for? This is a parcel of land that's actually owned by a, a church affiliated group, and um, uh, it's very difficult to build upon. It's it's the large amount of it's wet, so they offered it for to for sale to the town, where the proposed purchase price is very favorable. Um, uh, even in comparison to what it, the appraised value would be. And uh, the idea here is by acquiring this, it would continue to further our advance east um, for the Upper Charles Trail. And, and so it's, it, the, the strategic idea behind it is to acquire a parcel that will let us continue to extend the trail network going that direction. Okay. Yeah. All right, another school question is about the school bus parking lot. Um, let's see, there's several questions. So one is, why is the cost so high? They thought um, small numbers have been quoted in the past. <coughs> and what is the rationale for using a centrally located um, parcel on Route 85 where all the schools are versus a more remote location? Mm -hmm. So I, um, 
I don't know what the quote would have been in the past. I did check with Mr. Dumas, and he didn't have that information either. I do have a memo written um, from a, a former superintendent in uh, January 2013, and the cost at that point was the cost that we're quoting, so okay. 320000 That includes uh, the site work um, for the bus lot. It includes, which includes site improvements, civil mechanical utilities, and electrical utilities um, for the project. Mainly, we're looking to reduce, uh, or actually reduce expense and bring in some revenue um, <coughs> by not having to park our buses out of town in Ashland. And so we are thinking about, if we, if we look at 25 buses, um, the town would receive approximately $15,000 a year in excise tax revenue. Um, we would have an additional, uh, our, our contract would likely decrease by 10,000 annually. And uh, when we do the, um, the, the, we look at the cost that it takes to transport um, back and forth to Ashland, the savings is, is approximately $86,000. So um, we feel that this is some significant revenue that could, could be a result of it. We also wanted to really talk about it mostly as a placeholder because we know that there's a committee that's looking more broadly at the use of, of those properties, mm -hmm. the, the Tadaro Irvine properties. So school committee's interest in getting this out there was as a potential um, something to consider for the development of that area um, should should that committee choose to go forward. <coughs> we wanted to um, just earmark it. Okay. Let's see. And we had a similar question, maybe better for Mr. Wisemantle, about traffic on Route 85 with the dog park and the schools and Chestnut Street. Would it, it's not being considered for this town meeting, but will we be considering a traffic light at Chestnut Street now that we'll have an additional school near there and we'll have um, the dog park and right. the trail. That won't be under discussion at town meeting. That's yeah. the, that's a process for, okay. for another time. So if somebody was interested in lobbying for that, they should go to the planning board, maybe perhaps. That would be an excellent place to start for a future yeah. town meeting. Uh, I would add, it's always excellent to watch your volunteers in action throughout the year. You know, people tend to think that uh, you know we spring these town meetings on them at the last minute, but the preparation that goes through our various boards throughout the year is impressive and uh, it's a huge volunteer time commitment and uh, we're blessed with a very good set of volunteers here in the town. Okay. Let's see. Oh, and regarding town meeting etiquette, can you go over which articles require a two-thirds vote versus um, just a simple majority? Uh, it's, it's actually very simple. Yes, I can. Uh, <laughs> it's actually very simple. Two-thirds votes are uh, either um, in things like uh, ending debate or uh, changing the order of the meeting, and uh, also on anything where there is uh, uh, land or uh, land involved. <coughs> so all of your um, planning board articles, the zoning articles, require two-thirds. Um, for the most part, everything else is a uh, majority. The one sort of crazy exception is on old bills, uh, bills from a previous year that somehow didn't get paid appropriately within the fiscal year, we require a nine-tenths vote at uh, town meeting to uh, four-fifths four -fifths at uh, Excuse me. Ben just corrected me. He, it's very kind of you to do it so it's quietly so there. It's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, he didn't even kick me. Four fifths uh, at uh, okay. uh, town meeting. And two thirds for bonding. Oh, and also, yeah, and two thirds for bonding. I was going to get to that. Okay. So, this is a question probably for Mr. Kualo and the super and Dr. McLeod. What, are there any significant budget items this year due to state mandates? So, new things or increases that. Um, were unexpected for new laws this year? I don't, the answer may be no. <laughs> yes. Um, in Very fact, much yes. on the town side, stormwater phase two has a substantial financial uh, impact on the town. Now that the, the state has approved and issued the permit, uh, our budget is actually going up by approximately three hundred and twenty to $380,000. Mm. 
And I will add to that um, the, the one that comes to mind immediately is just the increase requirement for second language learners and SEI endorsement. Um, people probably would not realize this, but every teacher is now mandated um, to be trained. Um, and, and, have an, and have as part of their um, licensure SEI endorsement. Um, so that's a mandate. The way it affects us is just an increasing population of students needing ELL services, um, which then results in needing additional teachers to provide those services. It's um, very formulaic in terms of the level of proficiency that the student has and the amount of hours of instruction that they are required to receive every week. So that's the, the biggest one that comes to mind that, that has to do with mandates. Okay. And um, I believe we saw in the slide that the percentage budget percentage increase from last year is about 3%. Do we know what, how much higher the average tax bill will be next year for an average sized home? So right, so that's old information actually. Okay. Um, uh, we sent the, the budget, the draft budget off to the Appropriations Committee in mid-March um, and asked them to take a further cut and um, and they actually were able to, to reduce some expenses and work with the town manager to make some adjustments. And so the overall budget now comes in, it's slightly under 2.5%, it's about 2.4, 2.45 or something percent. So, um, uh, so it'll be under, under that number now. Um, uh, what was the second part of the question? How much higher will the average tax bill be? So you said 2.4 to 2.5%. Yeah, I, I don't think we've gotten to the point yet of calculating that number. Okay, but uh, that might we be finalize available everything. before town meeting. Um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we'll have that there. But uh, it also, I mean, it, it, what comes into play there is is other things that get voted as well, how many right? So you can, right, how many capital articles you do. And so it's, um, even at town meeting, it's a little bit of a moving target based upon other things that get voted at town meeting. But some of that increases new growth, as I understand it. So, right, so the, the, that's the net increase of, uh, after taking into account new growth, right? So every year we get money from basically three sources, um, local taxes, um, money from the state for various reasons, and then, um, and then what Bruce referred to, which is new growth, which is new construction in town that, that starts to pay us a sum of money before the services catch up. And so Bruce's excellent point is that, um, is that uh, uh, absent that new growth, um, uh, you know, you'd, you'd obviously have to raise taxes incrementally more to maintain the same level of services. But the other side of that is that with the new growth, your tax bill isn't as impacted because <coughs> you've got the new growth there. That 2.5% takes into account the new growth. Oh, I stand corrected. Okay. No, I'm not corrected, just elaborated. have another elaborated. turf field question that is probably, you've answered it, I think it's similar, but sure. um, regarding the bleachers, I guess the existing bleachers, um, maybe you're not in the best condition and they were wondering why we wouldn't um, wouldn't wait and invest money in the bleacher repair instead. But is it because you're replacing the whole thing and there will be new bleachers with the new setup? Correct. That's so exactly right. Okay. Oh, and so and that's be, part of the of the um, total, yeah, design. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so <coughs> the, it will become the football field, the existing football field that's on around near the track. We would maintain both. Oh, so we, we would have the, gr the current grass football field. Um, and then the, when I said that we could play football on the turf, um, there's a design now where you can have a, a post sleeve, which if we wanted to use the turf field, they could have, yeah, They could move the post from yeah. one field to the other? Correct. It's got a big hill though. <laughs> Sorry? It's got a big hill from field four up to uh, the current football field though. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't think it would be moving the current ones because they're installed differently. Okay. These would be removable okay. goalposts. Okay. Um, let's see. And we already asked the water tank. Well, there's a question about connecting to the MWRA. Um, so um, how did that come about? Right. And why are Fear we not. That's not the plan. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, the town has an issue with water, um, which is our capacity is, um, to pump is exceeded by our usage. And so several years ago, particularly in the summer, obviously, and so several years ago, we work, we work on a variety of different ways to solve this. Um, we have some wells in town we we're investing some money into to be able to get more out of them. We, um, we obviously a few years back got the new well uh, put in place over by Legacy. And then, um, and, and maybe this isn't as well known, but we also have for several years now had an agreement with Ashland where we had the ability to, um, to bring water from Ashland 
uh, to meet our peak demand requirements. And, and that, it, in theory, provides us with a certain amount of, of water. Um, in practicality, however, it's been limited by the fact that Ashland also periodically runs short of water, particularly at the same time as we do. And so they actually reduce our ability to, um, to take water from Ashland. Uh, what has happened, and the reason for this million dollars, is Ashland has actually now decided to solve their issues by connecting to MWRA. So they're going to start taking all their water from, from that uh, district. Um, and they're spending, what's the numbers, Norman? Several million dollars Seven to million do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Many millions of dollars to, to implement that. Um, what they are willing to do uh, with us as a result of the, the reduced demand they'll have is actually provide us with greater access to water um, that would be sufficient to meet our needs. And as in, in exchange for that, we're basically paying them a million dollars. Um, for the, for the yeah for all the sort of build out of all the all the that's required for it so this is basically designed to solve everyone's problems Ashland goes down to way they have excess water now we pay for some infrastructure and we get um, more access to the water from their that comes from their town which obviously reduces our requirement to to make a lot of other very expensive investments as at a high level, as a town, we spent a phenomenal amount of energy the last few years looking at our water sources, looking at our water challenges, and and I will say this is by far the most cost-effective option available to us. Okay, and just to clarify, um, there's several water uh, articles that are quite expensive on the warrant this year, but I believe they're all paid for from the Water Enterprise Fund. Is that right? right so only right. ratepayers, not people who have only their people own with wealth. water um, have them. They're all bonded, so they're spread out over a period of time. Okay. Um, and, but they're all designed to enhance the efficiency of the water system. Okay. And the question also asked, what is the percentage of Hopkins residents that are on town water? But I think the concern was that was everybody paying for it or not. So okay. do we know the percentage of people who on? Yeah, I, Ken does. yeah, I don't have the number here, no. I'm sure Ken knows it. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel like it's, I feel like it's less than half. I, feel, so I think it's closer to two-thirds. Is it really? Oh, it may it's 40% don't have it. May it's 60% well, don't have it. legacy, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's something. We'll, we'll stipulate it's around 60%. Okay, so let me see what is left. I'm sure we have, let's, we can do some zoning questions now that Mr. Wisemandel is here. So can I also, Amy, while you talk about this, you, t you asked about um, mandates and, and state requirements. I want to point out we also have some other expenses in the budget this year that, although they're not mandates in the way you meant, they're absolutely obligations to the town we have to pay, and that goes to the, to the, um, to the OPEB funding article we have in there. That goes to the, um, uh, the money we're what putting OPEB into the and, huh? Pardon? OPEB. Can you want to give what the yeah 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 other other post employment benefits article? It goes to the um, we have a few of these articles to, to, to deal with retirement benefits that we have to pay over time and these sort of obligations the town's going to incur. And I'm just bringing the, bringing the numbers up right now. Um, um, uh, uh, you know we're transferring money into, into general stabilization. So the idea here is to is uh, although these expenses aren't probably legally mandated in the way you say they are, they are legally mandated. In fact, that, that they're contractual obligations of the town to our employees. Um, we have to pay money to the retirement system uh, as well. And so um, so while in theory they're discretionary, to the extent we don't pay them now, we're just increasing the liability, which is already quite large down the road. Okay. All right, so we'll start with the Elmwood Park zoning um, change. So why is this happening now? Is this the right time? There's a lot of development going on in that area of town. Um, how will this impact traffic, traffic pedestrian safety? Um, it's basically, if you boil that article down, uh, this is to basically upgrade the uses in that, that area. Uh, we're trying to get a more classier office park as opposed to one that has garages and more industrial uses in it while still keeping our uh, you know biotech manufacturing type uh, stuff in that in that area so it's a small change uh, to, to that area uh, as far as traffic or anything like that that would have to be uh, taken into account during site plan review like any uh, industrial commercial property does. Can you give some examples of the types of businesses? Right now there's biotech and then some unused, a lot of unused space. Um, what type of businesses would be permitted now with the change? I know there's probably a huge list, but. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty long list. Uh, it's, it's 
I can kind of remember more of the ones that are, are, are not, okay. not well, permitted. You can, you can give us some of those. People a garage. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, half of the, uh, the site has got a bunch <laughs> of old, uh, I'll call them butler type building uh, type, uh, low end uh, industrial area. And so uh, uh, basically we're trying to upgrade it and also to encourage the hotel to go into that area. I think we have a caller on the line. So, caller, if when you're ready, please go ahead and ask your question. Um, yeah, hi. Uh, I wanted to learn a little bit more about the proposal to make the town clerk an appointed and appointed to the town clerk instead of elected job. Great. Okay. Can I just so I'm going to take my answer off the here. Okay, thank you. So I guess why is this change being proposed? Yeah, um, no, great question. So for ever in Topkinton, the town clerk has been an elected position. Um, uh, it turns out that in the state, I don't know what it's 15 or something. What's, do we know the number? Okay. It, it, some extraordinarily <laughs> small number of actually of town clerks nowadays are elected, and and all towns have moved to having. Um, their town clerks appointed, and that's because of the fact that the town clerk position has actually become an extraordinarily um, uh, knowledge-based role. Um, it, uh, the requirements on town clerks nowadays are extreme in terms of the things they have to take care of. Everyone sees them dealing with the, the ballots and, and, um, and licenses and permits and all that sort of thing, but they have a number of other requirements that go beyond that, and so the, the amount of training that a town clerk undergoes, both to, to learn their job and then, and then afterwards to, to continue to maintain their, their currency of knowledge and, and fulfill all the, the state mandates is, is quite extreme, actually. And so we've been very, very lucky in this town in that we've had uh, some terrific long-term town clerks, right? And so, so people who, who learned the job and were very good at it. And, um, and then we had an assistant town clerk who stepped up to the town clerk job and became extremely good at it as well. Um, uh, but going forward, it's, it's become a position that it's clearly the professional demands are such that the benefits of having it be elected um, uh, are de minimis. And, and the challenges to the town of having a town clerk in the position who hasn't been educated properly for the role are extreme. Uh, and again, that's why already most towns have actually moved to appointed town clerks. So we will, um, uh, we will look to uh, get this approval at town meeting. It also requires a change in the charter, um, but this is, uh, is clearly the, one of the steps we, um, we'd like to take. And it's, it's simply just, just a reaction to the fact that a town clerk's job nowadays is extraordinarily uh, detailed and, and has a lot of requirements. Okay, that leads to a question we had um, submitted earlier. Um, how would the implementation, implementation process work for this? Because we're currently electing <coughs> the town current town clerk had retired and we have the assistant town clerk taking her place and then we have an election coming up with two candidates running for town clerk but it also has to be a charter change so it will have to be voted in another it, w so it won't happen right away even if it's voted in at this right time meeting. right so what will happen is regardless of this vote on the ballot this spring will be um, an election for the new town clerk position should the town agree to make this change and, and it thereby carries through the charter, um, uh, when, that is when that new charter is implemented, the town clerk position will switch to being appointed, and there will be a period of which that the town clerk will then transition uh, into being an, an appointed role. So the person who wins the election could potentially be appointed later, uh, you know, a oh, year down the line. If, absolutely. Um, right, if, he's, if the person likes the job and um, it's going well. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Oh, I better go back to zoning because I know Mr. Wisemanel has a planning board <laughs> meeting tonight. Okay, the hotel overlay district. We don't have any hotels in town, so um, why are we trying to attract one? How will this benefit us? Um, and will, how will this affect traffic? Okay, uh, we're trying to attract them. Uh, we implemented the hotel overlay, oh, five, six years ago. Uh, we have not been able to attract a hotel. We put in some very difficult uh, requirements in there, and uh, particularly with a uh, health facility and a fairly large function hall, uh, both of which nobody's building hotels with those type of requirements in, in our zoning. So we uh, 
scale back those requirements a little bit and hopefully we'll be able to attract a hotel. One of the benefits is uh, there's a nice tax uh, income for the town uh, if you get to get the hotel. Uh, I think it's what seven and eight seven percent or something like that. I, I forget we, we changed that last time. Okay. okay so um, we have another part to that question but we believe we have a caller on the line. So go caller go ahead and ask you can go ahead and ask your question. live over on Blueberry Lane. I'm a passionate dog owner, and uh, I understand that there's a dog park that's being built in our town, and I was curious about, you know, maybe where that might be going and how it's going to be managed and maintained and, and so forth. I um, wondered if somebody could speak to that. Okay. So it, does anyone know the details of sure. the dog park? Oh, okay, go mm -hmm. ahead. Well, uh, from my CPC uh, responsibility, CPC would be funding... Uh, the, the uh, dog park. It's on Hayden Row, just south of Chestnut Street on the uh, old Hughes property. And that connects uh, onto a lot of different town trails behind uh, the Charlesview subdivision. But there'll be a small parking area off of, uh, of Hayden Row Street in a fenced in area for the dogs to be left off leash. Or you could take them and your dog along for a walk on the, on the nice trail system. I think the dog park will be very popular uh, in town. So we also had some very specific questions. Or does, is the caller still on the line? I don't know if they have additional questions. No, I think they're off. Um, we had some other questions about the dog park. Um, very detailed, so you may not have these answers yet. But um, will residents need to pay a fee and get a permit to use the park? Is there a limit on the number of dogs allowed at the time? Will there be drinking water, a place for the dogs to wade and swim? I think there will be a drinking water that was discussed. There'll be a, uh, 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 an area to dispose of the, the bags with, uh, when you're picking up off after your dog. Uh, and uh, I don't think they're talking about a limit, but maybe it'll get that popular that we'll have to have another one somewhere else in town too. I know they're very popular in, in many towns uh, around. So how will the maintenance be funded? Will people need to apply for um, a permit to use the park? I think, it's, I think Parks and Rec is, is going to handle that, and that's through the DPW somehow, and I'm not exactly sure how they fund it. Okay. That was on the dog park questions. The second part of the hotel question, could this hotel, now that it, the requirements are changed, could it be used for transitional housing, um, like has happened with the hotels in Marlboro? Um, could the state if they didn't have enough sp beds in a homeless shelter, put people up in our hotel if we get one? I, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't think there's anything in our zoning that would stop that. Uh, okay. you know, I will point out that's been a budget buster in Marlboro, and, and particularly for the schools. It's been a huge issue. Huge. Okay. Okay. Okay, another CPC question. Uh, the netting for at Fruit Street, um, what is the purpose of it? Um, where would it go? Is I believe it was to keep the balls out of the parking area and, uh, and maybe out of the woods also. Okay. Okay. My only comment as a parent, I'd be, feel much safer at yeah. lacrosse yeah. practice if they, if they didn't have to worry about the balls coming okay. out. <laughs> <laughs> Money well spent. All right, let me see what we have. <laughs> if you've ever seen a car dip on a cross ball, it's not a pretty thing. <laughs> I have a Twitter question about the town clerk. Um, would positions still <coughs> vest a new job opening and interview process? Pardon? I'm not sure what they meant. Um, exactly. Okay. If Maybe if one of my helpers could um, retype that. I think uh, Mr. Kamala a little knows the more answer. clarifying. Uh, or you, yes. Like, yeah. He also if reads he writing on the wall. <laughs> oh, okay. It's just amazing. And he's had this question <laughs> before. Yes, yeah, yes. Stuff. If the question is whether the position will be advertised per the town bylaw, mm -hmm. the answer is yes. Okay. And in terms of vesting, I'm assuming that they may be referring to a contract. 
to be signed for the position? Hmm. The answer is, if that's the question, the answer is no, this will be an at will employee. Okay. So currently, when it's elected, um, they're elected for three years, and at will, they could be one year, two years, or whenever, right? Okay. Right. But again, we'll follow all the standard rules for uh, appointments or positions. They have to be posted for a certain amount of time. These, okay. these requirements will fulfill. Okay. Um, oh, let me oh, and who would appoint the town clerk if the, it becomes an appointed position? Who's the appointing authority? Yeah, that, that would be part of the charter revision that's ongoing. It'll be decided for right now. And we would vote on that at a future town meeting and election? Right. The, the, the charter um, review committee has been appointed and has been doing their work and won't be ready for this town meeting. Um, uh, right now they're thinking maybe the fall or, or else next uh, spring's town meeting for, to bring forth any proposed changes to the charter. Okay. Um, let's see. I think we've been yeah answered that. So let me go back down to this other zoning. Um, questions here. Oh, what is the rationale for getting rid of the senior housing? That is um, a bylaw change, I believe. Zoning bylaw change. I'll take that one. Okay. The concern on senior housing is that uh, the federal government doesn't allow you to discriminate on age. So the town can't enforce that. So we're seeing people under 55 moving into our senior housing. And, you know, th typically that would, the bylaw was set up to be so that we could approve a type of housing and not have any school kids in, in that area. And, you know, we're, we're seeing that going a little differently at this point. And uh, there are some senior housing that you can enforce through a condominium agreement, but the town can't not necessarily enforce that agreement to keep there so the condominium owners could then change their bylaws and allow anyone to be in. Okay. And then a similar question about what is the rationale for repealing the sex offender registry bylaw? I think that's something we voted in fairly recently. Right. That is, um, that kind of came down from the state. The state Supreme Court ruled that those requirements are, that those laws as written are invalid. And so as a matter of public policy um, at a state level, it's it's been deemed um, not to be in effect. And so repealing at this point has no effect because the state wouldn't let us enforce it anyway. Okay. All right. So let's see. Go ahead. <coughs> okay. There's going to be a, a question. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's one coming in about the weeds, but it's not fully typed yet, so let me skip down to a different one. Um, and so I, I guess it's the same question, and I think the answer is similar regarding the sign bylaw. There's a huge number of changes to the sign bylaw this year, and what is the reasoning for that? Okay, the Supreme Court uh, came through and said that you cannot uh, determine signs by their content. Free speech says that anything is going on. Before, we'd say, like a realtor store, a sign had to be a certain size, or a sign for a business as opposed to a political sign, or a sign for whatever else. So we had to kind of uh, make our sign by law one size fits all. And uh, we only did changes yeah. that town council recommended that we do. So we are complying with the latest Supreme Court, <coughs> U.S. Supreme Court uh, ruling. And I believe it was the unanimous one uh, about a year and a, about a year ago. So it was, uh, we felt that. pretty strongly <coughs> about it. Okay. All right. And we have an email call in about the the Lake Maspinock weed situation. It says, at the February um, Lake Weed Committee meeting, the committee stated they would publish their recommendations. Are these available yet, and can you advise where residents can find these in advance of town meeting? The committee is working with the Director of Public Works, John Westerling, to publish re the recommendations, and as soon as they are available, we will advise the public through the town website. Okay. And again, we mentioned earlier, but not everyone may have heard, that the Lake Maspinock weed article 14 is probably going to be voted no action at town meeting anyway. Recommended. Recommend. Recommend. Yeah, recommended to be voted, but yeah. we shall see. <laughs> see how the vote goes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. And these are a couple that we had emailed in um, earlier. So we had a couple questions that don't directly relate to town meeting, but residents are interested and concerned, so I just want to make sure we ask them on their behalf. 
Hopkinton contains a large natural gas facility, and with increased concerns about the safety of these facilities, should Hopkinton allow residential development to occur n near this LNG facility? I know this is not happening at town meetings, so if you want to say like, how somebody who is concerned about this issue, how they should go about finding out more. Um, I can talk to the study. I think the question really goes more to the planning board, though. The I guess I'm not going to, uh, you, can, you can do it, at, come at our, our planning board meetings. Uh, the Legacy Farms proposals will, will be starting up again after the town election. We have uh, several vacancies on the board, so we cannot continue the, the hearings uh, until after the town election. Uh, I'm sure the planning board will come to some resolution on that uh, from a safety standpoint before we allow anything to be built around it. Uh, so the planning board meetings are televised, correct? They so are televised, so and someone could attend uh, we person. welcome everyone to come and participate. Okay, so they should look for agenda items relating to Legacy Farms. Yes, it'll, it'll probably be right after the town election as soon as we appoint the two members to our new vacancy, so we'll have a full nine members to consider that. Okay. And Amy, if you've got one more for me, I, that's about it because oh, okay. I've got a meeting um, in. That might be really about it. I think that was all okay. the CPC um, and the main zoning ones. This is, um, this is really Parks and Rec. I'll ask it in case you feel that you should respond. Um, and again, this is not directly related to town meeting, but um, let's see. In 2010, Parks and Rec paid Weston and Sampson to as assess the landscaping on the common, and as a result, over 20 diseases <coughs> or dying trees were cut down. Going forward, the report said that four shade trees will be planted each year, and it has been four years, but no trees have yet been planted, and there are many bare spots. The Holman Fund contains money for planting the trees on the common. Why has uh, Parks and Rec stopped the tree planting program? I guess and or is it included in the budget this year? That's an outstanding question that I'm unable to answer. Okay, and no one from Parks and Rec, no. this is Parks and Rec is here. Okay, so if someone who's concerned about this should um, discuss Contact with Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Absolutely. They could also call into the Women's Club. Um, they're having an event on Wednesday, I believe, um, where you could ask the Parks and Rec candidates too. Okay, so if Mr. Wisemantle needs to leave, I think, um, I think that, that's sure. all the planning. I, I, I want to see Ken. That's oh, did he, yes. Phone. Everyone yeah. needs to fill in their form yeah. about how long yeah. they... Did Mark, you fill it in? Janine. Yeah. Yep, yeah. I got it. Blue <laughs> wind. I won last year. <laughs> and you still have to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we had another emailed in question about the weed committee. It says, several of the chemicals recommended by the Weed Committee are knows, known to cause health issues and stay in the soil for a long time. Are these chemicals part of the current recommendations? And I know we stated that the recommendations will be available via the DPW website shortly. I don't know if you know part of the answer or we, waiting. We, I don't, I'm not familiar with the list of the chemicals at this point until we see the recommendations. Okay. Yeah. And Amy, I mean, folks who are interested in this, and you clearly have some people who are, should interact with the committee. Okay. Um, the meetings are posted, right? And they'll, they're, but they're not televised. It's a smaller committee, right? So someone no, would have to actually right. go in person. Don't have to go to it. But I mean, this is the, as Bruce said earlier, people should go while it's being worked on, not just show up at the end um, to hear the answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, just to add to that, this is the type of input from the citizens at the time that you're, you're doing it that, that actually is helpful and that actually does make a difference in the final product. So if there's a lot of folks <laughs> that show up on one side of an issue or another at a meeting, it does make an impact. Okay. And I, I think the answer is the same, but the, another question, the same topic. Have we calculated the number of injuries that will result from the use of these chemicals? But I think you said we don't know yet. I sent, which, I which sent some agenda here. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> these, these people should, should attend the meetings and, and okay. voice their, you know, have their voices heard now to help shape this policy, not to show up at the end, which will not be a town meeting, I want to reiterate, to, to um, uh, debate the policy then, right? Help, help make it what you think should be is the right answer now. Okay. And many people saw the lake drawdown over the winter. Um, so is, is that what the funds we appropriated last year were used for? I think you mentioned some other uses too. Um, we appropriated 60000 for weed control last year and they drew, drew down the lake over the winter. Is that what the funds were used for or that was the state took care of that? I think as we all know, uh, annually we do have a drawdown at the lake. Okay. I can check with the DPW director to see if any of the funds appropriated last year 
uh, for the weed control and management program were used towards the drawdown. Okay. But the drawdown was more substantial to try more to freeze the weeds over the winter. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, and we the winter did cooperate. Right, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of folks did that this year. There was a lot of places where I saw s extreme drawdowns this year to try to get the same answer. And do we know what else the money would have been used for that we've appropriated last, uh, I think it was in the fall? Uh, for the weed, uh, I can't remember if it was last spring or last fall. The uh, again, I think as we've seen over the years, the studies entailed um, in such projects are Pretty, pretty scientific and at times costly. Um, so it was a I, study? Yes. A study to for see the most part, yes, it was for the study. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And we're waiting. We'll get the recommendations soon. And, and by the way, the studies <coughs> tend to be things that uh, the people that are passionate one side or the other on can refer to because it allows them uh, a more uh, scientific basis for their uh, discussions. So okay. it's important to get those done. Yeah. We had another question for schools um, that is not directly related to town meeting again, but it's a question people have <coughs> about the amount of recess that children have. And um, th they say that 15 minutes is not enough. And is there anything being done to change that? And if someone was interested in that, what should they do? So um, we, I did meet with a, a group of, of parents who voiced their concerns. Um, we do have a public forum planned with the school committee for the purpose of having a conversation to better understand on both sides, um, provide some information around requirements, um, time on learning requirements that we have. Um, and um, that is going to take place. We have yet to establish the date, but we're going to do that on Thursday night. And then I will send a list serve out to families so that they aren't aware of the date um, where we will have and really look forward to um, having a conversation about this issue. It'll okay. be sometime in May. Okay. Let's see. So we've asked about the fields. Um, just going to see if there's anything we've skipped here. We jumped around a little bit. Okay. Um, I think that is almost all the questions on my list. Are we getting any more via social media or calls? Okay. Oh, I would like to go over. We have a slide about CPC funding. I don't know if we want to jump to that. And can we go? And so we have a slide explaining how CPC funding works. But some people were confused, like why we vote on it at a town meeting and how how does it work? So could, could somebody speak to how the CP, what is CPC funding? Is not appropriating new money. It's money that well, already comes out of our taxes. You want to go, go on. You can. Yeah. Yes, um, I, I think. We should look at this in, in, in two parts. Um, in fact, it's in three parts. There is the first part where annually the the town, uh, based on an established tax rate, uh, receives um, tax income from town residents. The second part is that there is also a state contribution depending on the amount that the uh, town uh, appropriates through taxation. Uh, and then thirdly, there's also over the years money that is uh, set aside in specific buckets uh, within the CPC um, uh, program, uh, including funds for open space, historic sites, affordable housing, passive and active outdoor recreation. And I think over the years we've also agreed as a community that some, mon some funds need to be set aside for administering uh, the CPC program. So in summary, those are the three three aspects of the of the law. But the mechanics of it are that, right, there's a surcharge in your property taxes every year. The great benefit of the CPC program is that the state matches that to some extent, so you get you get leverage on the money. And then it goes into a fund which the which the CPC, the com the Community Preservation Committee, um, uh, which is a group of folks who are who just some of them come from other committees, some of them just come to that committee directly. But it's a composite entity that can then allocate this money, again, in certain percentages to different projects. And so some years they, they allocate very little money um, to things. I think last year was a fairly light year, if I recall. This, some years, they, this year there's a, there's a fair number more things they allocate money to. But it all, as Mr. Kamal said, it all is allocated to those different buckets. And, and what they do is they take 
proposals in from the community for a period of time in the fall. Then they sift through all those, decide which ones are the most worthy, decide which ones they can legally fund, and there are sometimes things that they just can't actually allocate the money to that are worthy causes but just don't fit them on the buckets. And then they bring those proposals to town meeting, which then makes the final decision on on actually using the money that's in the fund. But the money sits in the fund until it's allocated out to something else. This is, it, this is not pure money out of your taxes. This is stuff that we want to buy for the town ultimately. And the fact that our town was, uh, I think we were the third town in the state to sign on for the uh, CPC law meant that we basically, I, I think in the first couple of years, had a windfall profit of a, um, a half a million uh, to $700,000 is my memory, but I, um, that came from the state because none of the other towns had jumped in to do that. And uh, so we've done uh, a lot of the uh, historic preservation and other things that we vote on in town meeting come out of this, uh, this uh, fund. And uh, so it's been uh, a boon to the town. Yeah. CPC has unambiguously been a terrific thing for the town to have. Um, and as with anything else I'll say to people, the Board of Selectmen makes appointments to CPC, right? People who want to come forward to be part of the process should should uh, come forward when we make appointments every spring and uh, and put their name in and try to get involved. It's a, it's a great committee. And residents and um, committees can submit requests to CPC in the fall, right, to be considered for every Anybody can submit a request, and the deadlines, you know, the days move a little bit, but it's by and large. It's, it's actually fairly early, and they make most of their decisions before the end of the year, prior to the town meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's people should be alert and, and know to put it in sometime in the fall, yeah. Okay. Um, another question, and I don't know if any, I know Mr. Wiseman left, but um, the sidewalk master plan phase two, we didn't see a dollar amount for that, and um, we also remembered previously voting for a, a different sidewalk plan a couple of years ago that I think was a five-year plan. Right. So is, can you explain the difference between this, or have we already yeah, we can completed talk the first part? <laughs> yeah, no, we can talk to the whole thing, actually. Yeah. So this is, um, this is a continuation of that plan. It's actually uh, coming into the final year of the cycle. And, and the reason we put a sidewalk plan in place in the first place was because this was highlighted by the community as one of the key attributes they wanted to see enhanced. Um, there was a great desire for sidewalks initially in downtown, but now kind of spreading throughout the rest of the community as well. Um, people want to be able to walk to places, and safely, I should add. So, um, so uh, we put in place the sidewalk master plan, as you said, a few years ago. It's been a terrific success. Um, uh, the ones that run down Ash Street and, and elsewhere have been, um, have I think, been widely uh, accepted. However, because the plan ends next year, the, the idea here is that we'd like to start planning for the next phase to be able to, to continue going because there are obviously um, cost efficiencies um, if you can just sort of continue a make plans to continue an ongoing plan as opposed to having to sort of stop and then restart the plan down the road. So uh, this article was put in as a placeholder and it's continued to evolve since you got that last version of the warrant. Um, uh, and so now what the, uh, what the goal here is to seek uh, uh, basically design funding for um, about 6,000 more feet of sidewalk, so something more than a mile. It would go in a couple different directions um, um, uh, through town, again, to, ex to extend existing sidewalks in high-value locations. Um, and the number is actually quite small. Uh, we, we're still working through this a little bit and how we might fund it, um, but it's it's between one hundred and thirty and two hundred thirty thousand um, dollars, probably more toward the lower side. So it's okay. not it's not an enormous number, but again, the benefits of, of having it keep going will be um, uh, will be very very high for the community. So I think we have some questions at the mic. Just before I go to them, I want to mention that there is currently a sidewalk survey on the town website. If you have um, if you want to give input on where you think sidewalks need to be in Hopkinton, you can fill out the survey. All right, and we have a question at the mic. Um, yeah, I came in a little late, so hopefully nobody's already asked, but it was more of a general question, um, and I wondered if you could um, explain are there any debt exclusions, any um, money articles that are going to the ballot, as well as having to pass a town meeting? Hmm? I think going to the ballot. Yeah, there's nothing on the ballot this okay, year. that's what I wanted to clarify. It's a, it, yeah, it's very thin on that stuff this year, and the capital articles are relatively light, too. Okay. I think we have a second question at the mic. Thank you. Um, I actually had two questions. One is, and it may have been for Ken who has gone now, but if we have a hotel district in that Elmwood area, 
um, and we have the Elmwood School a mile away. Is there anything in place um, in terms of strangers being in a hotel a mile away from our kids? Or has anybody thought about that? Do you think that's... I, you know, I'll just take that quickly. That's part of um, what happened with the state Supreme Court. I don't think we have the ability to enforce some of those things. So I enforce where a hotel goes. Well, you can, is she talking about you talking about convicted sex offenders? I'm, or no, just I'm, not, I'm not. She just, just means anybody, human beings. Right, because we have Corys in our schools just right. to make sure that we don't have a person come in. But I'm just it just occurred to me that that's pretty close to where the Elmwood School is. Um, just I just uh, you know just something to think about as that goes forward if there's any way to I don't know what you could put yeah. in place Well, what I, I would I would just I, I can't answer that specifically I would speak more in terms of process right so first of all you have to have the zoning change so this could be would be an article to a discussion initially to have with regard to the zoning change and the wisdom of it mm -hmm. um, uh, and then clearly as it moves forward I expect anything in this magnitude would probably end up coming back to town meeting for something or else, and I think you'd have an even more detailed discussion of it then. Okay. So I, my guess is you're going to have at least two chances to, to voice this concern. Well, it just, it just occurred to me. Um, yeah. And then the other there's question... A lot of, there's a lot of questions that come around this, right? So, I mean, it's Well, it's be, a new thing I for us to have a hotel, but then, yeah. and, and if I can open my mind to that and see the benefit of the 7% tax revenue, it's great to, to have something that brings taxes, money in instead mm -hmm. of out. But then it occurred to me of how close that was to the school. Well, there's certainly challenges, right? The state contract challenge that came up is, is something we'd have to think our way through because that's financially <coughs> very challenging. This could be a question. I mean, there's certainly things you have to talk to your way through. Thank you. So I think, um, and I have one more. Can I? Oh, yeah. Uh, this Sorry. is actually related. If you, I think Perfect. you might be able to answer. But um, there is an article on the ballot for, to upgrade the intrusion alarm systems at Homewood this year. I don't know if this is so much in schools we want to talk about that. Uh, so uh, that I am happy to talk about yeah. it. I don't know that it's related, though. Well, it would be security if there were yeah, more strangers in the area, I suppose. Um, I'm thinking of kids out on the playground and yeah. strange persons walking from the hotel. And okay. I don't know. Yeah. What Exterior. You, I don't okay. Know. Well, Margie, you're going to be one of the ones I out know, in the playground, so you're not going to let that happen. <laughs> um, right. As far as the security is concerned, though, I mean, it, it is really around additional um, cameras, external mm -hmm. cameras. So we would have uh, the more right. more ability uh -huh, um, to be able to monitor and, and make that very public, that our, our playgrounds are being monitored on an ongoing basis if it's the playground area. Um, I feel very confident with the dual security system right. um, in, in terms of being able to prevent any unknown people from getting in. Um, and so I do think that the additional security at, around the property could, could be of use, of help. Thank you. All right, you had a second question. The second question yeah. is, um, in terms of the taxes, there's um, Article 5 on the warrant. I'm not sure of the exact terms of that, um, but it has to do with personal or property tax abatements. And um, just thinking of the seniors in town and the development and the additional 2.46, whatever it is, tax increase, um, I have heard concerns from seniors about whether they'll be able to continue to stay here and pay the taxes. I didn't know if that was part of that. Article 5 or? So the tax exemptions, are they for veterans or certain groups? It's, it's, oh. it's certain specific groups under, that are defined under MGL. Um, affordability for senior citizens has been a concern of the Board of Selectmen as long as I've been on it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we are obviously fully aware of the fact that it's becoming increasingly expensive to live in town. Um, we have, uh, over the past years, looked at several measures to try to offset those taxes. Um, there have been um, there have been opportunities for senior citizens to get to get rebates. There are ways uh, there have been ways for senior citizens to sort of pay in, al in an alternative fashion. Um, we have actually put some effort into um, into looking at ways to um, uh, uh, to further mitigate the tax burden. Uh, the, However, having said that, right, I think we all agree in, in, in concept it makes great good sense. Um, uh, when you start to look at it in detail, it's, it's extraordinarily challenging, right? right. Um, schools are, by definition, an intergenerational transfer payment. And so, um, uh, you know, you have a question about, um, uh, you know, you live here, you put your kids through the schools, and then your kids go away. Should your taxes all of a sudden go down? Well, 
that doesn't quite make sense. Yeah. So there's you know there's a, there's a lot of, of complexities to this issue. Um, however, it's it's absolutely always been a concern of ours. It continues to be a concern of ours. Well, we recently did. Took, well, you can talk exactly. about it. Yeah, you can you can take the credit for that one. Um, so you know we work we work on this regularly. Thank yeah, you. and in fact, the, the board uh, uh, should take the credit for it because okay. of, your, we'll of, of its leadership. Um, recently, we found um, uh, a, a donation um, from a local uh, corporation um, that's providing approximately five thousand dollars to the tax relief fund, um, which in fact is now going to get that committee going uh, moving forward. Uh, I think the board of selectmen. Uh, has charged the town manager to continue to look at other ways of strengthening the tax relief fund. Thank you. <coughs> and would it be a complicated process for the seniors to access that? From, from my discussions with the members of the committee, this is a very user-friendly process. Great. And okay. if anybody has any questions, I refer them to uh, the chair, Mr. Palmer. OK, thank you. Thank you. OK, um, we have another? We have a question for the schools about um, why are we, from Twitter, why are we investing in the high school athletic center scoreboard replacement and not the older middle school athletic facilities? Oh, not this year. It, yeah, it was not one of, it was not a priority. <coughs> Initially, the um, high school scoreboard was what we were having to repair it constantly, um, and then it just stopped working completely. So it's just a bigger priority. Um, in terms of where we have more games and the condition of the scoreboard. Okay. So is it currently, is it working now? It's just where it fails frequently? This it is now working again. <laughs> we never are quite sure for how long it will be working. But um, the, the replacement bulbs is very complex as well. It requires being on the lift and um, accessing from behind so it's not only the maintenance and the repair but it's the ease at which that can happen um, which is of concern so the replacement the proposed replacement it will look very different from what's currently there okay. I, think I found another question here that was um, probably another planning one I should have asked earlier oh the dog daycare facilities um, that's kind of a new one that probably popped up um, so why are we? Why do we have a zoning article for dog daycare facilities? No. Usually these things come about because of some conflict, conflict that's arisen. Yes. Okay. The, uh, we did speak with Mr. Wiseman a little bit ahead of time, so I will just say he told us that. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, that's the animal. I, I think he did tell us that um, the dog daycares in town are not currently regulated at all, and they're seeing more and more in homes. So they just wanted to make sure there was a set of regulations, but we should confirm that with him. <laughs> Generally, later. those uh, those issues come up with uh, how many animals can you have in your place before it's considered mm -hmm. uh, dog daycare, and then give that to the planning board and let them. Okay. And have again, if it's a, a, an issue that you're passionate about, you've got to go to the meetings as they occur. So there probably will be something at the planning board where they bring that up, you know, watch for it, and then go down and let your opinion be known. Okay. And is it the same about the animal shelter bylaw? Does anyone want to explain about that? I believe there's a specific reason about the Bay Path um, Humane Society, <coughs> right? No? It's not a school committee issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. We got a mailer from Bay Path about asking us to vote on the article. The residents did. Yeah, I, I think the general issue is that uh, the Bay Path lease um, with uh, Eversource is coming to an end shortly. Okay, and does yeah. Bay Path, if I understand correctly, provides um, dog pound services to the town that we're required to provide? They provide excellent animal care services to the town. Okay, so if Bay Path lost their lease on their land um, and had to move out of town, we would no longer have a dog pound facility? Is that right? Yes, and the next alternative is Framingham. Um, I can share with the community that uh, the last bill we received from <laughs> Framingham when we had an emergency need uh, for animal care uh, over the weekend was pretty substantial. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like this would put in place zoning to allow animal shelters in certain parts of town with <coughs> certain requirements. And so if Bay Path could potentially move to another area of town if they lost their lease with Eversource. Okay, um, I don't know that we have any other, oh, maybe we have one more question coming. Okay, 
And I should have said this before, but qu questioners at the mic are welcome to state their name if they wish. Or okay. Uh, but it was relating to the scoreboard in the gym. And the question was, is it being moved from center court to another location? It is, um, and I don't have the specifics. I do know that um, we asked the question because of, of course, the lovely murals that are currently in place on either end, um, so it would not have an impact on, there, on that. But it is not going to be installed the way it currently is. Okay. Um, I just don't have the details on exactly where it will be. Okay, thanks. See. This is related, I believe, to the lake weeds again. Um, at the at the, the meetings of a, it's a weed advisory committee, I think that we have, yes. right? Um, there have been a number of folks at the meetings who have pointed out the dangers of chemicals, but the committee appears to have a mission to use chemicals despite the concerns. After the recommendations are finalized, will the public have an opportunity and adequate time to review, comment, and vote? It will not be on the warrant this year, or the, the okay. motion was expected to be to take no action. Um, so there will be ample time for further discussion, we would expect. And even if it does remain on the warrant, there will be ample time for further discussion. So but again, if people should attend the meetings now and make their voices heard. Okay. Well, it sounds like the questioner has, has attended meetings. Right. And so are we to understand that chemicals will not be used until such time as the review uh, recommendations come out? That is the, uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. And then I guess I'm going to ask the panelists if you have, if, if there's a question that, that we didn't ask that you think is an important article that people should know about, please feel free to elaborate on any articles that didn't get enough attention. Do you have one to come out? Or? No, other than to, to thank the wonderful. Uh, volunteers of the community and uh, their knowledge, their expertise, their dedication is what uh, has carried us to this point that will carry us through to our meeting. Okay. All right, everyone, has everyone filled uh, their articles? The only thing I would mention is um, it's a look at because just because it's kind of unusual, Article 16 and 17 are these transfer of funds, and, yeah. and I'm not going to belabor it, but, but this is an attempt to acquire for the town. Um, a ladder truck via a somewhat circuitous route. Um, the town had previously, uh, a year ago, uh, appropriated uh, some money to buy a different piece of fire apparatus. And what the new chief thinks he can actually accomplish is to, um, is to take that money and use it in a different way, which will let us get a somewhat less expensive piece of apparatus, but also to, um, to buy a, a ladder truck. And, the, and for people who don't know, the town doesn't actually have a ladder truck nowadays, which, um, uh, which, is, which causes us to have to use it Ashlands or, or someone else if it's available. And it's a, a growing safety concern in town that we don't have one. So, um, so this, again, haven't been doing this for a while. I've not seen an article of this sort. But, um, but and it, I suspect it will require some conversation. But again, it's really just, an, it, it, we found, we think, a better way to, to use the money that was previously voted and to, and to end up with a ladder. And so it requires these two articles to accomplish that goal. Okay. Dr. McLeod, any other school articles? We've no, I think, um, I think we're good. But I, I thank you for the opportunity. I think right, it is a great um, opportunity to clarify, but also to prepare me with any, any um, answers to questions that people have. Um, so thank you for inviting me. Okay. And Dr. Carl, anything you want to remind voters of before they get to town uh, meeting? <laughs> no, but I do want to thank EHOP for putting this together again. Uh, as Ben was saying, this is, we are a town blessed with wonderful volunteers. So thank you all. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. This has been terrific. Thank, so thank everyone at EHOP. I think that wraps up um, the questions for tonight. So we'd like to encourage voters to stay in the know by subscribing to our e-newsletter and following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll be sending out additional information about town meeting later this week to pre prepare you for town meeting on Monday, including our annual town meeting 101, which is geared toward those who have never attended before. We've also been posting, we'll be posting town meeting results on our website and to social media live from the meeting. So a huge thank you to HCAM, especially Mike Trojan, for his help with tonight's event. And of course, thank you to the eHelp board for working behind the scenes tonight to make this forum possible. In addition to myself, we have Tara Sanda, our Vice President and Flamingo Flocking Coordinator, 
Nanda Barkerhook, our secretary, Cindy Bernardo, our treasurer and Know Your Vote Forum planner, Mary Puella, our PR and marketing co-chair, and Amanda Fargiano, also PR and market membership co-chair, Nancy Cavanaugh, website content writer, writer and board member, and Christy Willitson, board member. So it's a tradition here at Know Your Vote that we take bets on how long our panelists think town meeting will last. The estimated number of nights and the time will meeting, the meeting will adjourn on the final evening. The person who's the closest without going over will get the honor of sending out our first flock of flamingos this year <laughs> for our annual fundraiser. To you, a victim of your choosing. <laughs> All right, so can I get your predictions, please, it's for the record? If you, Dr. Carlin? I was going to predict Tuesday at 10. Tuesday at 10. I think the town moderator is going to bring it on home at Tuesday at 10.30. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Kamala? Well, I want to differ slightly from the town moderator. He will bring it to a close on Tuesday at 9.59 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> and my vote is Wednesday at 9.30 because I anticipate there's going to be lots of discussion. Wednesday. <laughs> I'm least optimistic with Wednesday at 10.15. And Ken was Wednesday at 9.30. Okay. Well, I would point out that Ken won the bet last yes, year. Yes, last year Mr. Wiseman won. didn't flock his... Uh, and he flocked his friend on Pleasant Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happens when there's a tie? Because there's a tie now. Oh. Oh, what's your... both win. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of We do have a lot of yeah. votes. <laughs> <laughs> to pick different yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, everyone. And we will see everyone at town meeting next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.